Good afternoon. Our Christmas offering on the kickoff match, two eventful games from the First Division, both played here in the North West. From Goodison Park, there's Everton against Manchester City, and that comes first. Then we move to Old Trafford for Manchester United against Nottingham Forest. Immediately released to Wilkins. And he sends Koppel deep into the corner. Again, Forrest spread eagle. Oh, beautiful try from Wilkins. More excitement from Old Trafford later. We start, though, at Goodison Park, where the spirit of Christmas was very much in evidence before the match. Let's join our commentator, Gerald Sinstad. And there's a change in Everton's defence today for the first time in eight games. Club skipper Mike Lyons returns because Mark Higgins was injured in training. Uh, contrary to what's been reported, Everton say the injury was not caused by a collision with Mike Lyons himself. This is a midfield conscious that manager Gordon Lee is looking very critically at their goal record. Though Andy King, of course, is exempt from that. He, Bob Latchford and Brian Kidd have scored all but seven of Everton's goals this season. Check on the City lineup. Willie Donachy passed a fitness test this morning, so he keeps the number three shirt. All City's midfield players have scored this season. Their problem has been the partnership up front. Bobby Shinton, who scored both goals against Real Madrid in the midweek friendly, gets another chance today to develop an understanding with Mike Robinson. Nobody with more incentive to add to his scoring record today than Brian Kidd, former Manchester City player, of course, as is Asa Hartford. And once again, Steve Daly there with the uh, short sleeves in the middle of that picture will find himself subject of direct comparison. He, of course, is the million and a half pound man who has taken over from Asa Hartford. Hello, Paul. Merry Christmas to you, mate. All Thank the best, you. all the best. Merry yes, Christmas. Yes, my linesman. Hello, Mick, all the best. Have a Merry Christmas. Thank you. Yes, have a good time, the two of you. Yes, meet my linesman. Yeah. Seasonal yeah. greetings Paul, from today's Paul. referee, Mr. Gwyn Owen from Anglesey. Tails it is. Big decision. It is absolutely right. Yeah. Turn round, yeah, okay. Oh, it took Mike Lyons a long time to make up his mind about that. So Mike Lyons not only restored to the side today, but reasserting himself as Everton skipper and hoping to put some beef into his side. Manchester City in their change trip kickoff. They start the day in 15th place, a point better off than Everton. Gidman to Hartford. Pitch hard in the middle and soft down the flanks which may cause a problem or two players were thinking long and hard about studs before the game a throw for Ray Ranson to Katie Bailey Lyons to Gidman Ross well forward making a run going right there's the pass for him Donachy wins the ball Parr making a run down the left ahead of him nicely judged pass from Donachy and a good pull back cleared well by Lyons Booth above King Donachy Parr Parr uh, had gone for the return ball. King. Ross. Gidman back to Martin Hodge. Is for King who've made a quick break got the wrong side of Caton Andy King quick sprint through there and he was goal side of Caton but the shot well off time Joe Corrigan wrapped up against the cold And now 
scores. Stanley uh, Staley scores. And Daly makes it 1-0 for Manchester City and goes to get the acclamation of his new fans. Mistake here in the Everton defence and it was easy for Steve Daly. That's 1-0 to Manchester City. Mistake by Gary Stanley letting in Steve Daly. Game not yet 12 minutes up. Kid. And ball given, a flag from the linesman, Mr. Burrows from Warrington on the far side. Header by Cato. Bailey. Bailey giving it to Daly, who's lost it. King. Stanley. Bailey again. Caton's header has gone straight to King. Gidman. City defence pushed well up again, looking for the offside. They won't get it here. Caton was the man who'd stayed back. Boo. has found Carr Kinton Carr again Ransom chased in by Robinson but Hodge has it to Parr, Parr's header straight to Gidman King Gidman Kid has lost it Robinson chasing this long one from Daly and may just get there too running it back off the post and Lyon says thank you very much. King. Lucky to Carr and now Daly. Shinton. Right. Donaghy, Carr, header away by Wright, Latchford, Bailey, Hartford for Everton, Ross again calling for that diagonal ball to the near side but it doesn't come, Carr. Slipping it through, but offside, Henry. It's Mr. Funnel from Chester, who caught Tony Henry offside. Caton's header. Kidd. For King. Hartford. And King. Of determined competing there by Asa Hartford in the back of that picture, setting it up for Andy King here, but King's volley was pulled wide. Shinton, back header for Daly. Bennett. Stanley stepped in. Lions, too hard for King. Ransom playing it into the space. Bennett was prepared to chase, but knew he wouldn't win. It's too hard 
from Gary Stanley who's having a pretty unhappy afternoon midway through the first half 1-0 to Manchester City and that should be Gidman and Hodge between them or will it be par? no Hodge recovers but always a danger when the keeper is coming out and there's a defender running in towards him and you can see here how Paul Parr almost profited from the misunderstanding nearly got through the ball ran back and Hodge collected Latchford's header to Kidd now King and here's Ross Green well that's the story of Trevor Ross's season that is he keeps getting himself into the right place but he cannot finish curious he did it well when he was an Arsenal player sure he won't enjoy seeing this again plenty of space toe under the ball three up for City three defenders back for Everton one by Shinton for Bennett Daly has come up to make a fourth for City and Bennett is dancing his way through awkward for Lyons and Henry has scored the quick break caught Everton City were up there even-handed three against three then Bennett did some good work and it bounced awkwardly there for Lyons he didn't quite know what to do with it but Henry did Tony Henry makes it 2-0 after 26 minutes Gidman Kid to Gidman and Matchford turns it across Stanley's dummy was a good idea but the ball cannoned away off Henry's legs a jump in there and the free kick is Everton's Ross takes it, hits it deep Good header back too by Lyons. Lyons so powerful with his head. It was off him that the ball rebounded to Henry for the City goal, but I don't really think he could be blamed for it. Gidman. King. Ranson. Very strange ball, but it's all right. Tony Henry taking over in the city side from Steve McKenzie in the last half dozen games and has now scored three times in those matches. Stanley. And kid slip the pitch particularly through the middle where it's hard. Very difficult for players to keep their footing. Robinson. Blocked well by Bailey. Stanley. Stanley has had a bit of an unhappy opening half hour to this game but now here is King letting in Ross and Ross a tremendous shot well saved by Corrigan well Ross was certainly on the mark that time no complaints about that shot and now at the other end Shinton with Hodge five yards outside the area and the ball out of play but it was at the other end that the goalkeeper really was the hero Ross who put one shot earlier off target here hammered it and kept it low but Corrigan made a very good save from a very hard shot Bennett settling for the throw in Henry to Shinton Tipping it in with the left foot. Linesman was flagging. It was probably a push by Robinson on Lyons, but it was a good catch by the keeper. 
Tony Henry tripped this in with his left foot and it was a very testing one for the goalkeeper and Hodge well behind his head held it very well Stanley Kidd Ross and Gidman going to his right and through the middle there is King and Hartford shot well taken by Corrigan quick snapshot there by Asa Hartford denied by his former teammate Joe Corrigan King gets up to this and as it comes down Hartford left foot was well on target Corrigan across and down fast I think Mr Owen must be enjoying himself out there we've had 46 and a half minutes in this first half no stoppages he's checking his watches now and now blowing his half-time whistle with Manchester City in a commanding position leading by two goals to nil goals scored significantly perhaps from midfield one by number eight Steve Daly and the other by Tony Henry that's then the position at half-time join us again in a few moments for more action So both teams concerned about the state of the pitch in the first half. Both have had uh, difficulty keeping their feet and I suspect there may have been some changes of shoes and boots during the interval. Latchford, Bailey, both sides claiming it. Linesman agrees with the referee, Everton's ball. Caton, Bennett this is very tight down on this near touchline King and pressure by Manchester City very nearly got them through there but Lyons did well for Everton Corrigan out before Ross can get there Ransom forward There's a pull back there well spotted by Mr Owen Robinson on uh, right Stanley Gidman Ross for Gidman again who made a good run to take that return ball he's going to have words with uh, with Donachie must have been something that Donachie said because the tackle for which he's given the free kick was by Caton kick played in and Corrigan punches not very far and makes the second save from Brian Kidd quite astonishingly well that was a remarkable save by Joe Corrigan rescuing a not very good punch from the first one attendance today 26,308 which uh, is a poor gate really for a Manchester Merseyside game daily Daly knocking that ball over Gidman's head to see if the defender could be caught turning but there's more foothold out on the wide edges of the pitch and Daly again under pressure from Stanley Stanley gets another bite still Daly Daly may in the end need to use Joe Corrigan or he may look for a goal kick and what he's got is a throw in for Everton and he wasn't too thrilled about it either King 
Lions, Hartford, and now King, clear run on goal, and should have scored, tried to make certain, they get it yet, Corrigan makes the save. Andy King, usually so deadly in those situations, wanted to make absolutely certain, and maybe left it a tenth of a second too late. Here he goes, dummies, Corrigan doesn't respond, and as Corrigan goes down, his knee saves. And then he's just in the right place to plunge with his knee again at the second. And in the meantime, there's been a yellow card shown to Steve Daly. I think probably a continuation of the altercation that he had with the linesman, uh, Mr. Funnel, about the throw-in a moment or two ago. So after a fairly sleepy start to this second half, suddenly a little explosion of incident. King's corner, headed out well by Booth. Back in by Ross, an appeal for handball, and it is given, but it's outside the area. So, Corrigan wanting five in that wall, that's what that outspread, upraised left hand means. And there it is from the front. Got a good five in there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven almost. And Everton aware that here is a chance to blast themselves back into the game. Turn for Kidd, and he's done it! <laughs> Brian Kidd, against his former teammates, pulls Everton back to 2-1. City were clearly worried that it could happen, certainly Joe Corrigan was, all the time spent lining up that wall, but Everton beat it by the simple classical means, a touch wide to change the angle, and a trusty left hook from Brian Kidd. 2-1 now, and Everton spirits raised, and their supporters' voices raised. Wright's nod back to Hodge, suddenly a different game. Still in play, and it's Hartford, then robbed by Donachy. Good tackle by Stanley. Just listen to the crowd now. Giving them a bit of Christmas cheer, and they are cheering back. Oh, that's a bit more like it. Forward by Ross, and what a good ball. King couldn't take it, maybe Hartford can, or perhaps Stanley. Got the impression again that Stanley wanted to make too certain of that. And it may be that these midfield players are conscious of the problems. Now, watch how he just controls that there, and then screws it across the face, perhaps hoping that someone else will touch it in. Right. Stanley available on the touchline below us, finds King on Bailey, Stanley just there to his right now, and that's easy for Caton, bad cross by Bailey, and Lyons doesn't find a man or find touch, Ransom for Manchester City under a lot of pressure, unfair pressure as it transpired, and it's a free kick and an apology from Stanley to Ransom. Bennett. Henry. Oh, that was cleverly done. Feel for handball. And Shinton is going crazy, but uh, I think if there was a handball, the referee will decide that at that point blank range, it couldn't have been delivered. Free kick given to Manchester City. He 
indirect three man wall he wants three man wall he's got played for Caton who can hit them oh what a good effort and the referee now is going to have words with Bailey Tommy Caton's shot went over referee and uh, Bailey had words but here was Tommy Caton very close to a well controlled goal Hodge didn't get a touch to it so we're in injury time in this second half we've not had any stoppages here either but uh, Mr Owen was generous to us in the first half so perhaps he will be now Daly Henry Shinton playing the 1-2 for him and Henry is through and he stubbed his studs had the gold at his mercy and it looked to me as though his studs may have stuck in the turf and Hodge was able to snatch the ball up this looked like the best chance of the game Henry is clear through here waits for the ball to catch up and then somehow his right foot wouldn't go through with it Ransom Bennett play on says the referee six or one and a half a dozen of the other I think they are both of them wrestling and the referee cross with Bailey because Bailey protested Mr Owen has been consistent in trying to apply the advantage where possible and firm words also there with Bennett he's now had a check on his watch Bailey King Lions Corrigan a safe catch and I suspect any second now we shall have the final whistle indeed there it goes Manchester City have recorded their second away win of the season in spite of their former player Brian Kidd getting the second half goal that brought Everton back to life for a while so the final scoreline Everton 1 Manchester City 2 well, Brian a reaction after that obviously not a very good one Gerald uh, we didn't play well at all in the first half uh, we couldn't string two passes together and we was let down on the basics really I think Everton fans are going to want to know why you can't string two passes together well, I think it's a reaction when uh, it was 2-0 down early on and uh, you tend to go for the difficult ball then, trying to get something out of it. It seemed to me too there were times when you got into scoring positions, not especially you, but various members of the team, and wanted to make too certain of it. Uh, I think you're right there. I, I, I tend to think, particularly this season, the service into the box hasn't been particularly good and yet we've worked on it, the boss and Eric have worked on it so uh, we're aware of it, it's not that we're not aware of it you know and uh, I think that's a fair comment myself personally What was your feeling about your old club? <clears throat> well I, I seen them last week against Derby because uh, I was out through injury and uh, I just thought we didn't play it was as simple as that, I didn't think it was uh, obviously I thought City was the better side but I just didn't think we played in the first half it was as simple as that did you report back to Everton about City in a way that worked out today? Well, uh, I would hope so in little things, yeah. I would, what I would sort of ways? So. Well, I think the way the, I think they work hard, extremely hard in midfield and they break very, very well. I think Paul Power is a great outlet for him when he's in midfield. And I also don't think you can get away from the fact of uh, the young son heroes is Tommy Booth and Willie Donnecker. I think he do a tremendous job and I think they, they never get any praise for it but to me Big Tommy and uh, Willie Donnecker I think they really really see things very early at the back. So a disappointing start to Christmas for Everton and Brian Kidd in particular on what is a very bitterly cold afternoon. City on the other hand were naturally delighted with their performance as Steve Bailey told Gerald Sinstad. Before the game today the lads wanted to go out and play for each other and, and run and work and I think that showed today against Everton which we'd taken two points away from them. Would you agree it was a better performance in the first half than the second? Uh, yeah, we, we played well, we came and we dominated the first half and we were two, two goals up and obviously Everton playing at home they're going to come at us and obviously leave, leave gaps at the back but we had to soak up the pressure and, and we did very well. 
What about your own goal to start with? Uh, I think it was a ball from the back, and I, I don't really know what happened. All I saw was, uh, I think it was Gary Stanley and uh, Mike Robinson running for the ball, and I just shouted to Robbo to try to tow it through to me, and he did, and I just did it the first time. Went in the corner, and I was pleased with it. What about Brian Kidd's goal? Well, that was my fault. I, I had probably two or three chances to clear the ball, and uh, I didn't take one of them. And eventually, I should have just poked it over the line, so give them a throw in, so that we could shut them down in that space. But uh, I was just messing about and got caught out. A bit worried then. When they scored, very worried. Yeah, because I looked at the clock and there was 20 minutes to go, and uh, I thought, well, they're going to really come at us now. And the crowd was geeing them on, and uh, we, we held out well. We sorted the pressure up well. Well, that's now halfway in the season. Is there anything more to hope for than survival this season for City? Well, when I when I signed for City, I said that Europe wasn't beyond us, and uh, on today's performance, I don't think it is beyond us. We 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 come to Everton and took two points, went to Leeds and got two points, and we've got Stoke on Boxing Day, and I'm sure we can take two points off them, and then we're right up with the the European contenders. Well, now let's move across to Old Trafford, where the match between Manchester United and Nottingham Forest couldn't have been better timed. Christmas has turned out to be a testing period for United, who have the opportunity of proving just how realistic their hopes are of winning the First Division Championship. Certainly a win against uh, Nottingham Forest will put them in the right mood for Boxing Day's visit to Liverpool. ATV cameras join the capacity crowd at Old Trafford, so let's join the commentator, Hugh Johns. And here he is, back in his hometown to start a new chapter in his much travel career. Stan Bowles played his first professional games not far from here at Main Road. Now, after spells in Manchester City, Berry, Crew, Carlisle, and Queen's Park Rangers, he wears a forest shirt for the first time in the first division to line up in this side. It's amazing when you look at that defence. Shilton, Anderson, Lloyd, Burns and Gray, 60 caps between them, yet Forrest have just lost five first division get away games on the trot. Can Bell's introduction to midfield change the pattern? Manchester United stick to the side that played so well when beating Coventry last Saturday. Gary Bailey's the only fellow there without a senior international game to his credit. The rest of them total 255 caps between them. A lot of talent. And not only are they unbeaten at home, but only three visiting players have scored here this season. The sharp form of Ray Wilkins was only one of the many outstanding features of United's exciting play at Coventry last week. It took him a little time to settle in after moving from Chelsea, but he now looks to be worth every penny of the £825,000 that United paid for him. <laughs> Referee George Courtney of Spennymoor, County Durham, gets us away. Forrest uh, changing their strip today, of course, because of the colour clash there in all yellow. And the red shirts and white shorts of Manchester United. Forrest now with bowls, looking to get away to that attacking area away to our right and now McQueen pumping that good and long for a couple did well to get it back to Jimmy Nicholl the ball through for Joe Jordan and Kenny Burns was well positioned for getting that ball clear and hit it too firmly a very difficult pitch this two three days of very hard frost and it's really icy on top Bertles in, and the ball on from Bowles to Francis. Francis being chased by Nickel, and here comes McQueen at him as well. Both Gary Bailey here and Peter Shulton at the other end wearing tracksuit bottoms. That's McCarry getting the ball on to Jordan, and stabs it in, and it's a goal. Joe Jordan, 1-0 Manchester United, 1-15. United justifying their second place in the table some side this a mistake in defence Lou McCurry getting the ball on and here's Joe Jordan just stabbing it past the groping hand of Schultz one nothing United it's Bertles Francis gets the touch on to O'Neill all the Bertles the touch for Francis Good try again. And once again, Trevor Francis on target. Kenny Burns. And McElroy pumping that wide on the right side. A gallop now for Gray. Couple stopped running and you couldn't catch that one.
touchdown for Bertels. Clearance by Buckham, aim for Macari. A tangle with Kenny Burns. Free kick. Wilkins on to Coppola. Wilkins goes again into that right-hand corner and wins the corner. Stan Bowles, he's been back covering. And once again, Nicky Thomas goes across to take the corner. Jordan McQueen up on the line, standing in front of Shilton. Joe Jordan waiting to come in far post. And a click over the bar from Little Lumagari. Tiniest man in that uh, Goldmouth lineup, and it was he who got up there. As this ball across, and it was Little Lumagari who got up really high, and he was only just over the bar. Gray off balance, but he had to whack it first time. That ball will drop for Bertles. And Jimmy Nicholl was first man there. Jordan and Anderson. Jordan gets it down to Thomas. There's McElroy. The cross. So Jordan couldn't get there, and Thomas tries it. And Luna Curry on the turn. Oh, good one, but Jordan's going to score his second goal. It's 2 nothing. Joe Jordan. But put it down there to Lou McCarry. This ball in from McElroy. The ball out. Thomas tried a, a shot on the turn, on the volley rather, didn't work for him. McCarry beats Shilton, just gets a touch there, stops it nicely, and Jordan says, thank you, I'll have that. Jordan pops it across to Coppola. That was a good ball. He's got support from Jimmy Nicholl. Goes instead for McElroy. And here's Nicholl now. Big long one, and nobody's picked up Jordan. And over the bar by Thomas, but that should have been a third goal. And where was that Forest defence then? To have left a dangerous man like Joe Jordan. Wide on the far post, unmarked. Jimmy Nicholl, a beautiful ball. But where are the yellow shirts of Forrest? Joe Jordan. And Thomas over the bar. A let off. Robertson. Bertles. Unfortunately for Forrest, gives it away to Wilkins and a couple. Tripped by Robertson. Free kick. And a word for uh, John Robertson. Wilkins kick. Carly's header, couple against Gray. Little touch in, but McGovern was covering. Robertson wants Gray to keep it clear. It's a throw in, says the linesman. A challenge of McCarry. from uh, Frank Gray. And a little bit of uh, needle suddenly erupts over in that far corner of the field. Nicky Thomas and Ray Wilkins sorting it out between them. And it's Wilkins and McQueen. Yes! Absolutely beaten. All ends up by Gordon McQueen. Oh, the big smile on that fella's face. Here's the free kick from Wilkins. And look at the power and challenge of this giant man. Woof. Shilton, no chance. 23 minutes of this first half gone and still goals to come, I'm sure. Trafford, the sound reverberating around the stadium now. Here's Bowles for Forrest. Kenny Burns forward. 
This comes out to McElroy, and again, United run a break. McCurry. Off to Houston. Ricky Thomas is in there behind Forrest. There's the cross. Koppel, can he bring it down and try one? Wilkins, have a piece of that. Ray Wilkins, this is 200th league game today. Could have celebrated with a goal there. What a sweeping, swinging attack from United. Well, you can understand the worried expression on the face of Peter Shilton. between O'Neill and Mickey Thomas quickly sorted out by referee uh, George Courtney he's refereeing this game well Kimbers Francis and the boot of Houston put the ball away sharp tackling of Mickey Thomas playing an important part in uh, containing Forrest's attempts to attack down this right side McQueen gets in the challenge, immediately goes back deep to look for Bertels again. Ken Burns. O'Neill and Bucket. And O'Neill won that one. He was being pulled from behind, free kick to Forrest. Martin Bucket and Mickey Thomas. We're about to form the wall, Martin Bucket being waved away now. So O'Neill with the free kick. Larry Lloyd's up in the box, says Ken Burns. And the clearance comes from Jimmy Nicol. McGovern. But Koppel is there. A little low ball for McCurry. Immediately released to Wilkins. And he sends Koppel deep into the corner. Again, Forrest spread eagled. Oh, beautiful try from Wilkins. Oh, he took that one on the dead run and deserved better. Oh, what a beautiful try. Again, a sweeping, swinging attack with Koppel going into the corner. And Ray Wilkins seeing this ball from Koppel, hanging in the air, really attacks it. And the hands of Shilton drag the ball down. O'Neill then to Bowles. Francis wide to his left. McGovern making a run through the middle. Stand the man, doing it all on his own. And a good ball off to Francis. To the line. The cross. And the ball over the bar from McElroy. Gary Bertel has got a touch to that across the face of the goals, but there was no Forest man to capitalise. Good run here by Francis, the touch across, touched by Bertels, but nobody there as McElroy knocks it over the bar for the corner. And that's the closest Forrest have been for a very long time. Now Robertson with the corner. And Harry Lloyd tried it, the Queen was there first. Here's Bowles. Off to Robertson. Cross for Larry Lloyd. Smother save from Gary Bailey. And United sweep back. McElroy. Nobody near him. Steadies himself. Looks for the cross ball. Did not deliver it. Frank Gray charged it down. As referee George Courtney signals the end of a tempestuous first half for Manchester United. Torment for Forrest. Manchester United ahead through Jordan. Inside a minute and a quarter. Jordan put him further in front. McQueen crowning a lot of hard work in defence with the third goal. Manchester United totally in the boss seat here at half time. 3 0. And the crowd settles down then. Now for the second half. And it's the all yellow strip, Nottingham Forest. 
now attacking the goal to the left, the goal in which United planted those three first half goals. Once again, the pressure builds on the Forest defence. That was Mickey Thomas going up the corner against Bill Anderson. Houston. And the shot. No, oh, a free kick's already been given for pushing. So Lloyd gets it on to O'Neill, to Robertson. And United bring a lot of people back as Robertson keeps on going. McGovern stretched a good ball off to Bowles. And once again, you can beat two men in a row. There's always a third one for United. McGovern, little pass on for Bowles. Francis can throw this ball in quickly, not pick up a free man. Here's for O'Neill. O'Neill with Bucket at his back. Thomas appearance. McGovern. Bertles. And that's Dan Bowles. So very nearly opened his account then for Nottingham Forest. The well worked opening by Forest. Is there better for their pains? So they've got to build again now through Lloyd. Francis. Francis tight to the line. And a corner. Goes to take the corner. That's Francis going near post. Header across and over the bar by O'Neill. How did he miss that one? Kenny Burns up in the air. Jordan. The European champions coming here with five consecutive away defeats in the first division. Now well on their way to a rather miserable six in a row. Just about twice as many defeats as they had anywhere in the whole of last season. Robertson. Skates that ball on for Bertels. It's always going to be the Queens, though. Bertels. Robertson on. Might oh, come. Oh, is Francis leaving it off to Anderson? And little Mickey Thomas again, a telling factor in midfield, defensive areas of midfield, Manchester United. France is down, Anderson across, cut out by Houston, Anderson again. Thomas again, the tackle. His handball. Well, the referee overrules his linesman. And that looked as though the ball had gone out. And still Forrest can't get it near the goals. Francis, good try. Bale. Oh. Never Francis. Well, he's not going to score today. And that was a beautiful try on the turn. Couple. Namakai. Down the line and gone. Let me see the quick turn here as that ball bobbles about. 
France is the first man to it. Turns here. Snapshot. Bailey reacted very well indeed. Old Trafford fans well pleased that they're seeing another Manchester United win here. This will be their ninth at home in first division this season. They dropped points to Palace in a 1-1 draw, Leeds in a 1-1 draw. But from the others, it's been four points every time. And here goes Koppel. Drive across the goal. That, I suppose, is as close to being uh, United's best-looking chance of this second half. Joe Jordan's ball on. Koppel not picked up. Difficult angle. Aims for the far post and was well won. George Courtney ends the entertainment here just before Christmas and the festive spirits happy for Manchester United fans the first half goals of Joe Jordan 2 Gordon McQueen the third wrapping up two Christmas present points for Manchester United here at Old Trafford beating Nottingham Forest 3 nothing. So a very emphatic win for United, which makes it a fascinating game in prospect when they travel to Liverpool on Boxing Day. Certainly United seem in great form at the moment. Gary Newborn asked Lou Macari what he thought about their performance against Forest. I thought we played well. Um, the last game at home we played very bad against Leeds and we dropped a point. I think it was because it was not in Forest we were determined uh, to play well and not to get beat. But we've been having a bad time for us and we felt that possibly today would be the day where everything would come right for them. Fortunately we got away to a good start and uh, didn't look back from it. Were you shocked really that you got such an early lead? Well against Nottingham Forest it was. Uh, I mean, their strength over the years has been the defence. Uh, and three goals up in, what was it, 20 minutes? Just incredible. Let's have a look at that first goal now Lou, because uh, you're instrumental in the first two. Well Gary Bailey, long goal kick. Uh, I was there, I was ready to jump and I think Kenny gives me one up the back side here. <laughs> well half up the back side and I flicked onto Joe and just lucky enough he got a toe poke to it and I think the conditions possibly helped us there. Let's move on to the second goal now. With, I think Sam and McElroy out in the wing and he, he crosses a good ball in and normally I think Larry Lloyd would have got that away uh, and Mickey Thomas can run it in. I had to turn because you know I think Kenny would have given me another one up the back side <laughs> if I hadn't have. And uh, Peter Shelton parried it down to Joe, and uh, Joe doesn't miss for two yards. Your third and final goal? Uh, well, this is Ray Wilkins who's going to take a free kick, and he's aiming for Gordon McQueen because he knows how good he is in the air. And there's Gordon, and I think you could say he gave Peter Shelton no chance. Of course, the big question is, can you really beat Liverpool for the championship this season? Well, of course, with anybody else, but Liverpool would be exceptionally confident. Uh, the level and points at the moment, Unfortunately, they've got a game in hand, they've got a better goal average. It's up to them really to drop a point or two somewhere along the line. Um, we're just hoping that in Boxing Day we can do something to help that. I was going to say, Luke, it's quite a week for you because you've got Forest to start it, then you've got Liverpool away on Boxing Day and Arsenal at home on Saturday. What well, do you we, think of that? Well, we thought today would be the hardest game. Um, a Forest team who hadn't been doing too well in the league, we thought maybe we would suffer. We've got over that, we've got two points and three goals. Boxing Day is the one. Not many teams go to Liverpool and win. Now a competition snapshot, and because of the uncertainty uh, of the post this time of year, we won't be announcing the winners until two weeks today. That's on January the 6th. So now let's hear the details from Gerald Sinstad. Last week we wondered if you would be able to recognise a player who, we told you, had made long strides back to the First Division. And yes, it was Alan Gowling, who travelled from Manchester United by way of Huddersfield and Newcastle to Bolton Wanderers. First correct entries we drew were sent in by D.R. Foster of Crewe, Paul Turner of Clayton, Stephen Dwyer from Cheadle Hume, Wendy Goodson, who wrote from Blackpool, and S.P. Walkton of Great Sutton. Well, now we'll give you a private view of someone else's family album, a youngster who, of course, grew up to play professional soccer. We were going to give you our usual clue, but uh, you might think it's a red herring. Anyway, this is the address, snapshot, kickoff match, Granada Television, Manchester 3. Snapshot, kickoff match, Granada Television, Manchester 3. Postcards only, please, and remember to mention your t-shirt size, large, medium or small. 
Well, that's it for this afternoon. Don't forget, there's a full Football League programme on Boxing Day. I'm sure your club would appreciate your support. We close today with two goals, which make it a very merry start to Christmas in Manchester. Run by Shinton for Bennett. Daly has come up to make a fourth for City, and Bennett is dancing his way through. Awkward for Lyons, and Henry has scored! And it's Wilkins. And the pig. Yes! Shorten, absolutely beaten. All ends up by Gordon McQueen. Hickory House, P744, strip 28, take one. Editing copy. Difficult one, Humphrey. Uh, oh, is it me, Humphrey? Oh, yes, it's me, Humphrey. Uh, yeah. I played a game, now what to do? Sing a song? Yes, good. I'm singing myself a happy song. A very, very happy song I cheer myself along and sing a happy song a very very happy song there I've sung a song hmm <sighs> wasn't a very good song wasn't a very good game either oh it's not much fun all alone by yourself what I need is someone to talk to me Hmm, what I need is a visitor. Yes, a visitor. Hello, Humphrey. I'm back. Ah, Nicolette, would you like to come and visit me? I'll be back in a minute. I just put the parcels away. Oh, putting the parcels away. Very busy. Nicolette's very busy. Oh, dear. No time for visiting, I see. Mm. Hello, Humphrey. How are you today? Oh, I'm fine, Alan. Would mm. you like to visit me? Oh, no, I'll be right back, Humphrey. I'm just going to find Nicolette. Hmm? Huh? Oh, Alan's busy. Going to find Nicolette. Huh. No time for visiting. Oh, I see. Well, we we'll just get things a bit tidy. Yes, just clear a few things away. Make a bit of space. That's it. There he is now. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. Yes, we'll take very good care of him. Isn't he lovely? Oh, yes, he is, isn't he? He's very little. Yes, he is. Let's put him near Humphrey. Oh, <laughs> good idea. Oh, 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 what's this? What's this? Hmm? It's a bird, Humphrey. 
It's a little bird in his cage. He's visiting us for the day. Oh, he's visiting? Oh, this little bird visiting here? Mm. He's a visitor? Oh, is he visiting me? Well, yes, I suppose he is, Humphrey. Oh, visiting me. Oh, how nice. Now, that's just what I've always wanted. You've always wanted a bird? No, 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 not a bird. A visitor. Oh, a visitor for me. <laughs> oh, hello, little visitor. Oh, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I would you like... Oh, 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 oh I've got him. Now, that's three, and that's four, and that's five, and that... Uh-oh. -uh. Now, did I say four or did I say five? I... Oh dear, start again. Now then, one, two, three. Hello, Dusty. Four. What are you doing? Uh, I'm counting. That's what I'm doing. Counting. Now, oh. oh dear, start again. Now, that's one, two, yeah, but three, Dusty, four. Uh, what are you counting? Bread. Pieces of bread. That's what I'm counting. Now, start again. Oh, blimey. Now, one, but, two, uh, Dusty, three. Dusty, uh, mm. why are you counting pieces of bread? I'm having visitors for lunch. See, call visitors and they're coming here any minute. Oh, now, I see. And, and you're giving them two, bread to eat. Um, oh. How many visitors are you having, Dusty? Oh, I give up. Now, what, I'm having lots and 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 lots. Yeah. Dusty, mm. does Nicolette know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, she said I could. I mean, just my friends, you know. I mean, got a lot of friends, you know. I mean, don't eat much, you know. Not like people. Oh, no, no, not like people. Not no. like people? No. I mean, your visitors aren't people. Oh, no. Birds. They're birds, my ah, visitors. Birds, you see, called birds. Now, would you say I have enough bread for all my visitors? Oh, yes, I should think so. There's quite enough bread there, does it? But wait a minute. Uh, well, what are you going to do with it? I mean, how are you going to give it to the birds? Oh, well, I hadn't thought of that. Uh, well, uh -huh. uh, uh, maybe they could uh, all come in here. Uh, uh, no. No, oh no, no, no. Well, oh no, we'll all have a picnic. That's it, a picnic. Now, now, plates, Alan. We we'll need lots of plates, <laughs> lots and lots of plates. Dusty, birds don't eat off plates. Birds eat off off the ground, or off a wooden tray. We could get a wooden tray and put all the bread on it, and then give it to the birds. That's it, a tray. Now I'll put all. Oh, now lend us hand, mate, will you? All right. Now there's a tray over here. Here we are. Now we put all the bread on it, like this. Hang on, I think there's a bit under your whiskers there. Mm -hmm. Yes, here it is. Now spread it all out, mm -hmm. like that. Yes, now if I take out. it outside, yes. I'll give it to the birds. Yeah. Oh yeah, well lots of bread there, isn't it? Yeah, you know mm -hmm. the light bread, you know birds do, yeah, yeah. Now then, all ready? Yes. Bread's up, birdies! Come and get it! This is a story about a bird, a big bird, a rooster. It's called Rooster Sets Out to See the World. One fine morning, a rooster decided that he wanted to travel. So right then and there, he set out to see the world. He hadn't walked very far when he began to feel lonely. Just then, he met two cats. The rooster said to them, come along with me to see the world. The cats liked the idea of a trip very much. We'd love to, they purred, and set off down the road with the rooster. As they wandered on, the rooster and the cat met three frogs. How would you like to come with us to see the world, asked the rooster, eager for more company. Why not, answered the frogs. We're not busy now. So the frogs jumped along behind the rooster and the cats. After a while, the rooster the cats and the frogs saw four turtles crawling slowly along the road. Hey, said the rooster, how would you like to see the world? It might be fun, snapped one of the turtles, and they joined the others. As the rooster, the cats, the frogs and the turtles walked along, they came to five fish swimming in the brook. Where are you going? asked the fish. We're off to see the world, answered the rooster. May we come along, pleaded the fish. Delighted to have you, the rooster replied, and so the fish came along to see the world. The sun went down, 
it began to get dark. The moon came up over the horizon. Where's our dinner? said the cats. Where are we supposed to sleep? asked the frogs. We're cold, complained the turtles. Just then, some fireflies flew overhead. We're afraid, cried the fish. Now, the rooster really hadn't made any plans for the trip around the world, so he had not remembered to think about food and shelter, so he didn't know how to answer his friends. After a few minutes of silence, the fish suddenly decided that it would be best if they headed for home. They wished the others a happy trip and swam away. Then the turtles began to think about their warm house. They turned and crawled back down the road without so much as a goodbye. The frogs weren't too happy with the trip anymore either. First one, then the other, and finally the last one jumped away. They were polite enough though to wish the rooster a good evening as they disappeared into the night. The cats then remembered an unfinished meal they had left behind. They kindly wished the rooster a happy journey and they too headed for home. Now the rooster was all alone and he hadn't seen anything of the world. He thought for a minute and then he said to the moon, to tell you the truth, I'm not only hungry and cold, but I'm homesick as well. The moon did not answer. It too had disappeared. The rooster knew just what he had to do. He turned around and went back home again. He enjoyed a good meal of grain and then he sat down on his very own perch. After a while, he went to sleep and had a wonderful dream all about a trip around the world. I saw a little bird going hop, hop, hop. So I cried, little bird, will you stop, stop, stop? I was going up to greet him, to say, how do you do? But he shook his little tail and away he flew. <laughs>